Jeremy Hardy is one minute lewd, <clears throat> the next blimpish, the next pithily acerbic. He is always one step ahead of insult and one ahead of expectation. Now, I'm not sure what that means, but I think it means that he's funny because that's what he is. And here is Jeremy Hardy. Well, thanks. Good evening. I would say it's great to be in Canada, but I don't want to take sides on the issue. Um, <laughs> but it is, uh, it is nice to be in North America. I was in Boston last year. I thought I should check New England out, because the old one's completely fucked. <laughs> but one thing I've noticed about North America is the religion, the religious bigotry. Like, for example, you have these preachers who say that AIDS was sent by God to punish people for being homosexual. Well, in that case, what was the plague for? <laughs> to punish people for wearing period costume? <laughs> I've no time for God anyway. I was brought up to believe that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Think about that. God loved the world so much, he didn't come himself. <laughs> he sent his little boy. I prefer Moses anyway. How many newborn babies do you know can navigate a wicker basket through a load of bulrushes? <laughs> Most of Jesus' miracles point to the fact that he missed his vocation and should have been in catering, I think. <laughs> Weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs. But you see, you have to have faith. That's what religion's about. There's a very good example of faith in the Old Testament. This is the story of Abraham and Isaac. Now, one day, there's this bloke called Abraham, and he's out there in the Middle East area, and um, God says to him, Here, Abraham, do you love me? Uh, well, I suppose I do really, God, in a funny sort of a way, yeah. <laughs> well, if you love me, prove it. Uh, what? You mean, no, I don't mean that, Abraham. <laughs> All I mean is if you love me, kill your son, Isaac. What's he done? Nothing. Questions, 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 Abraham. I just asked you to kill him. It's a perfectly civil request. Oh, well, fine, God, if it makes you happy. I just hope he can see the funny side of it. <laughs> so, Abraham drags his son up the mountain and is about to sacrifice him, kill him, and God says, Abraham, what are you doing? Well, I'm killing him like you told me. Abraham, it was only a test. Must you take me so literally all the time? Would I ask you to kill your own son? Nah, you big no, nah, nah. Do you want me to kill your son? Yeah, yeah. You would have done, though, wouldn't you, you bastard? And imagine the strain that this now puts on the father-son relationship. <laughs> Abraham got used to the idea by the end of the day he'd have a dead son. He's now got a son who's completely alive and knows that dad is quite prepared to murder him in cold blood when asked to do so. <laughs> you might be doubting that dad's going to put him through college. <laughs> but you see, God does very different things in the Old and New Testament. In the New Testament, he's much more subtle in the way he deals with humankind. In the Old Testament, he's mean, he's in there, he's vicious, a jealous God. He's, he's hard, he's, he's fucking Robocop in the Old Testament, God. <laughs> it's plagues of frogs and flooding locusts, the killing of a firstborn, the rivers run blood. In the New Testament, it's repent or the kid gets it. <laughs> Terrible, really. Poor old Jesus. But when Jesus is being interrogated prior to crucifixion, the centurions say to Jesus, look, if you are the son of God, truly, do a miracle and we'll let you go. Now, why doesn't he do a miracle? Probably, I think, it's possibly quite hard to just go into a miracle when you're not relaxed. It's probably got a great deal to do with breathing, I'm sure. <laughs> but also, he probably gets played to do miracles the whole time. He gets a bit pissed off. People always ask him to do miracles. I suspect when he was a kid at family parties, Mary would say, come along, Jesus, do one of your miracles for the guests. <laughs> Oh, Mum, I don't want to. Come along. Auntie Ruth hasn't seen you water into wine. Oh, Mum, can I show her my Ninja Turtle suit? No, you can't show her your Ninja Turtle suit. And tidy your room. It's full of lepers. <laughs> so, so, as we know, Jesus is beaten up, spat upon, forced to wear a crown of thorns and carry a huge crucifix up to Golgotha. Right? Then he is nailed to it. Now, for a while, Jesus tries to be a bit chipper about the whole thing. And a bit sporting, because he's British. After a while, the thing begins to lose its novelty for him, and Jesus has what we call his moment of doubt, which I think is fair enough, really. I think by this stage, he's got grounds for wondering if possibly the whole plan isn't going hideously wrong. <laughs> he's thinking, 
I'm the Messiah. I'm the King of the Jews. I'm the Son of God. I'm the Prince of Peace. I'm nailed to a piece of wood. <laughs> Why am I being persecuted? I don't even look Jewish. So Jesus cries in anger and in pain, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But only according to Matthew and Mark. According to Luke, he shouts, Father, unto thy hands I commend my spirit, which is a totally different version of events. That's journalism for you. <laughs> according to the police, he beat himself up and made a full confession. Anyway, fell on the nails when they were putting him in the van. Anyway, Jesus, Jesus shouts something and promptly dies, and God goes, Oh, sorry, Jesus, I was miles away. And God rends the veil of the temple in twain. And so all the centurions now go, Do you reckon we fucked this one up or what? <laughs> and the Romans feel so guilty that they have killed our Lord Jesus Christ that they invent Catholicism and try and blame it on the Jews. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to bring people closer together, that's all. Anyway, that's all from me. Fuck the Queen. Good night. <laughs>